afternoon to you. Glad you're able to join us for our developing story, the Reserve Bank increasing interest rates by 50 basis points. Widely expected, there had been some tension in the argument about whether it would be 50 basis points or 25 basis points. You'll know, of course, inflation yesterday uh, being announced, CPI coming in at 5.9%. Kalani Mbanja, our business editor, he is with me. He believes the Reserve Bank should have looked at around 25 basis points. I'm sort of of the view that it should have been 50. Dr. Christy Fulion is an economist at PwC. Dr. Fulion, good afternoon to you. Where do you stand on this? 50 basis points appropriate? Could it have been less than that? Well, going into the meeting, I was also looking for a 50. Um, I think the two sides of the coin is, one, if you're concerned about the consumer and the economy as a whole, you'll, you'll think 25 was right. If you're more inclined towards seeing the Reserve Bank needing to take a strong position on where inflation is going, would have been the 50. So majority of economists expecting it, and that is exactly what they did. They put their foot down and said, listen, we have to go up a bit faster than it was before because the inflation is now a bit, a bit more of a concern than it was until quite recently. Uh, Dr. Fillion, the, the recovery on South Africa's economy, it seems that a recovery that we, we've seen in 2021 from COVID-19, it's actually eroding. When you look at the forecast, now uh, it, when the last MPC meeting, it was at 1.9% GDP growth for 2022, now at 1.7%. This does not bode well uh, for uh, such things as uh, 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 the country's recovery. Uh, how do you see it uh, going forward? Because there's still other meetings, and 2022 is, uh, promises uh, to be a very, very tough year for both businesses and consumers. Yes, the last year was a good year when you look at the economic growth data. Um, and beginning of this year, the expectation was it's going to be a good year again as we got out of the lockdown situation. And now we're getting to the point where the Reserve Bank and many other economists are actually moving their economic growth forecast further downward. It used to be at 2%, now at 1.8, 1.7. So it's certainly not good news. And I think for ordinary South Africans, it means that uh, job creation is not where it should be at all. So st it's from an income perspective, household income perspective, it's bad. When you look at inflation, it's bad from an expenditure perspective. Uh, we know fuel prices are going to go up again significantly next month. Electricity prices increasing in July. So, no, there's, there isn't really much of a, a rosy picture to paint. Uh, there is obviously some external factors coming in here, high commodity prices around the world because of what's happening in Ukraine. So it's a bunch of things that's really outside the control of, of ordinary South Africans and certainly not a, a good news situation. I mean, in a way, Dr. Fulion, I suppose it's just a reminder that while we like to think of ourselves as a relatively big economy, we're still very much at the mercy of events. If it wasn't for Russia's invasion of, of Ukraine, we'd be in a very different position right now. Oh, yes. I think before this year, most people wouldn't have been able to tell you why Ukraine is important to the world or important to South Africa. Most people wouldn't have known that we import uh, quite a significant amount of wheat from them, uh, sunflowers, sunflower oil, uh, some things, things that we buy in the shop every day, every week that we didn't know we get from them. Uh, so, yes, if it wasn't for the situation in Ukraine, this year could have probably played out a lot different. We would certainly have much lower interest rates um, because the Reserve Bank wouldn't have had to make this 50 basis points increase today. It probably wouldn't have made as many increases as we're thinking now are going to happen second half of the year. So certainly, if it wasn't for that, we'd have a much better local economic picture. I agree. Dr. Felyun, some of these uh, factors that have led to this uh, and that led to a, a really worrying outlook for the South African economy and consumer uh, is uh, factors that he spoke about load shedding. We can do something about that. We can't do some, uh, anything uh, um, when it comes uh, about uh, uh, the floods. We can't do anything about the war in Ukraine. So there's something we can do about load shedding. And we know that we should be expecting at least 100 days at during winter, the outlook is not looking rosy at all. No, it's not great. I mean, the, the amount of load shedding we've seen so far this year is more than we had at the same time last year. Um, it keeps increasing every year. 
um, it's something that, that you and I can't do anything about. It's, it's with uh, decisions being made elsewhere. Uh, we know that the process of reforming and uh, reshaping ESCOM is probably taking longer than expected. We see news stories about um, uh, sabotage. There's a news story out today about that. So there's, there's a lot of different factors in there that tells you that I can do my part by saving the electricity, you know, putting off lights and so on, but it's not in my control. Uh, same with the floods, uh, those kinds of things. It is unfortunate that at this point in time, we, we probably had a good outlook for 2022 uh, before all of this happened, let's say from about the middle of February. We're now in a situation where South African consumer budgets are really being squeezed, interest rates going up, the, the cost of basic food increasing significantly. So for me, it's, 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 I mean, it's unfortunate, it's sad. Uh, that South Africans having come through this pandemic, coming through two years of lockdown, um, looking for a brighter, better year, um, we're going to be disappointed, unfortunately, once again. And you're almost hesitant to say next year will be better because we did that last year and we've got new obstacles coming our way. So certainly the tough environment that we as South Africans have been living in for quite a few years, it's, it's continuing as it was. I mean, there's so many things that you would not have predicted back at the end of 2019, pandemic, a war in Europe, all of those things. Um, all of this leads to a much bigger and, I'm afraid, almost impossible conversation around what your inflation expectations are for the year. I say this because Bloomberg, and I mean, this is the figure that I think is going to be quoted all year. Bloomberg said that inflation in South Africa could hit 8%. I nearly fell off my chair. Um, the Reserve Bank doesn't seem to be quite as worried. But, I mean, if Bloomberg is right... Well, then 50 basis points isn't enough. I mean, where are your expectations at the moment? Yes, look, I mean, any forecast for inflation is based on um, different assumptions. So one of the key ones would be what's the oil price going to be like? Um, three, four months ago, we were thinking the oil price is going to be $70, and we turned up at 130 It's now closer to 100 So it's all based on different assumptions. The Reserve Bank, its forecast for inflation this year is close to 6%. So it's close to basically at the top of of the uh, target range. Um, I think the 8% the number, which we've seen quite a few times being mentioned, is probably maybe the highest it could get at a monthly level. Uh, again, it is based on different assumptions. We wouldn't have thought that we've got the risk of fuel prices increasing by 3 rand 50 next month. It's, it's almost, you can't, can almost not comprehend that, that kind of a magnitude. So new surprises every month, new changes. My forecast for inflation, probably about 5%. 0.7, 5.8% for this year, which is where we've been the past few months already. Uh, so it basically means that the pressure we're feeling for inflation at the moment, it's going to continue for the rest of the year into 2023. Uh, given what's happening internationally, given what's happened with the RAND, I can't really see a let up in this inflation pressure anytime soon, unfortunately. I'm glad you're not with Bloomberg, at least, Dr. Pillion. I do need to ask about the petrol price, because the petrol price is going up so dramatically for two reasons, as I understand it. One, obviously, what's happened on international markets. I know the RAND is a factor in that as well. But the other is that it is the end of the sort of rebate scheme for the fuel levy. Now, the fuel levy has been paid, in other words, run around 50 of it or so, is because the fuel levy is not, the full fuel levy has not been imposed on petrol prices in the way that they were in the past. But that was always temporary, if I remember, it was going to be actually funded by selling oil stocks. Slightly risky move in my view, but what do I know? So here's the point. I can't see any other way for governments to recoup that money for the fiscus without actually increasing the fuel levy again. No, that's correct. It was a temporary measure for April and for May. Uh, government said they're going to give us this 150 relief for two months, and then it can, it's going to come back. Uh, and there's obviously been lots of uh, speculation about whether maybe it could be extended from June a little bit longer. Uh, it would be in the benefit of the consumer and the economy in general if we could continue with this. But it means that government needs to sacrifice income. So it's basically going to have to decide, can we do away with this money in our overall budget? And many people will say that government has often said the past few, or well, the past year actually, government revenues have been better than expected. So uh, there is certainly some argument to be made that government's got some room for that. But it's, it's very late in the month right now, and there's been no signal from government that it will continue. So the expectation at the moment is fuel going to up, going to go up next month quite significantly. Petrol price probably going to increase by about 3.50, uh, which takes us to, and, and I'm getting the chills as I'm saying this, 25 rand a litre in Gauteng, which is just a, a number that I think most people didn't think we would get to for at least another few years.
Dr. Pelion, let's talk about uh, employers. We know uh, you've spoken about um, uh, unemployment in the country and uh, all the factors surrounding this interest rates decision and what that does uh, to employment prospects. If I'm a business uh, right now looking at this particular decision and it impacts me and my debt levels, I'm unlikely to actually go ahead with some of the appointments or employment uh, of people that I was thinking of. It will curb that uh, uh, business yearning to, or, or uh, plans to actually employ more people. Definitely. And I mean, there's, there's probably two big factors at play. One is because interest rates are going up, a business person would need to pay more on their debt. Uh, and, and very few businesses don't have debt. So that's the one factor. The other factor is this outlook for the economy that's just seemingly getting weaker and weaker. So you as a business need to think, I'm going to not have as many sales or as much revenue this year as I thought previously. And then in the end, it, it comes down to, do I have the budget to create new jobs? And probably not. Uh, so it's certainly an environment where we, on the one side, really, really need jobs to be created. We've lost a net two million jobs the past three years and we need those jobs to come back uh, in order to bring down the unemployment rate and the prospects for that would be very very limited given how weak this economy is i mean we often talk about the outlook for the consumer but in the end what happens in the economy it impacts on businesses that they need to create jobs so i'm very concerned because the, the, the more people that are unemployed, the more social pressures there are, the more risk you have of unrest in those kinds of elements like we saw in July last year. So it, it is a point of growing concern within this high inflation, low growth environment. Dr. Pelun, the World Economic Forum is uh, actually taking place uh, from Sunday in Davos, uh, Switzerland, and there are themes, there's uh, agenda points, there'll be presidents from around the world, delegations, uh, CEOs, the who's who of uh, world leaders, really. If uh, we are talking about global inflation being the buzzword, we should expect it to be top of the agenda come Sunday and uh, uh, during the deliberations for the following week? I think it's definitely going to be talked about in Davos. Uh, the, the big problem at the moment is you've got high uninflation all over the world. So some of the developed economies are seeing inflation of 8, 9, 10 percent, the highest in decades. They usually have inflation about 1.5, 2 percent. So leaders from the developed world are really concerned. And part of the story is obviously linked to the cost of food commodities, which then gets us to talk about food security. So not only is it an inflation problem, so the, the cost of actually buying food, but it is the availability. And it brings us back to the Ukraine situation where, uh, as a country, Ukraine usually produces enough food to feed about four, 400 million people each year. And that has sort of stopped. Uh, the, the, the outflow of these grains, for example, has stopped. So it's, it's, a, it's a case of price and availability of food, and it links back to that uncertainty about if people are unable to buy food, if there is no supply of it or it's too expensive, again, pressures on social stability, uh, pressures on expectations of what governments could do. And we're seeing more and more news about this coming out in the world where, where people are obviously and understandably unhappy with the situation. And it's putting pressure on, on political uh, leaders. It's putting pressure on uh, societal leaders. And uh, it, it raises a bunch of red flags. And I'm sure it will be one of the key discussion points in Switzerland as, as these world leaders meet. Dr. Christy Fulion, really appreciate the time. Thank you, economist at PwC. Just to recap the breaking news on your screen, interest rates going up by 50 basis points.